Alrighty, so now we are on to 2.4, the sine and cosine ratios. So we talked a lot about tan ratio in the first two sections. Now we are on to sine and cos. So um, if you look here, like we were talking about SOHCAHTOA, this is what we were talking about here. Um, so we got pretty, <clears throat> pretty used to what TOA means. TOA is tan angle equals opposite over adjacent. Now it's time to learn about, <coughs> sorry, uh, sine and cos, okay? Now that we know a lot of the tools, how to use tan, it's very similar in using sine and cos, except for the fact that you have to analyze and we're now including the hypotenuse. So if we look at sin, uh, so here, that's simply telling us that sine angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. So remember, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Then you have cos. So your cos relates the angle to the adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? So now we have two other ratios to work with, okay? But remember, if, if you are using the same angle in each one, you just have to think, what is my angle seeing? And this is why I was super, I was harping on you guys in the first two sections that hypotenuse you always need to label before you start doing anything, okay? So let's look at this triangle. <coughs> it's a pretty simple triangle, right? We got uh, ABC triangle. It is 90 degrees, so if we wanted to show this triangle uh, using our, um, our triangle notation, this would be ACB. And if I said this was a right triangle, and if the question didn't tell us, we would assume that angle C, which is here, is 90 degrees. So angle C equals 90 degrees, okay? So list all three trig ratios using angle B. So we are going to... B angle B, okay? We are going to have the perspective of angle B. We are going to list all three trig ratios. So we are going to list sine angle B. Uh, well, let's first just list the general formula. So sine angle, remember, how do we remember? So, so is sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, okay? And then we have cos angle, which equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And then finally, angle <coughs> uh, TOA, that we know that one. TOA is adjacent, o or sorry, opposite over adjacent. So tan angle equals opposite over adjacent. So now we need to really understand that we need to know what angle we are looking at in terms of. So in this case, it's sine angle B. So let's look at sine angle B. And remember, before you start doing anything, always determine where your hypotenuse is. Your hypotenuse is from the opposite uh, side of your 90 degree. So here's our 90 degree, here's the opposite side. So this is our hypotenuse. Okay, now in terms of angle B, we can see here that what is the opposite side from angle B? Well, the opposite side from angle B, I'll write in black here, is, or this is blue, dirt, is B, uh, lowercase b. So this is the opposite side. So here for the top number, our opposite side length from angle B is B. Now what's our hypotenuse? Well, our hypotenuse never changes, no matter what angle you're using. Our hypotenuse is going to be C. Okay, so this would be C. So remember, our hypotenuse doesn't change regardless of if you're looking at it from angle B's perspective or angle A's perspective. The thing that changes is the opposite and the um, opposite and the adjacent, okay? Now let's look at cos. So for cos, 
we're looking at it in terms of angle B. Okay, the adjacent side here for angle B. The adjacent side, it can't be hypotenuse. Remember, adjacent means beside. What side length is beside angle B? Well, the side length beside angle B has to be A. Even though this is beside angle B, it's hypotenuse. It can never be adjacent. So that means this is my adjacent side for angle B. So here we go. Adjacent, okay, that will be little a, okay? And then your hypotenuse doesn't change. It's going to be c, okay? There's our hypotenuse. Cool. So now we already have two of the three trig ratios. What's, what about for tan? Well, if we write tan angle b here, what's the opposite side? Well, we already determined that. The opposite side from angle b is b. So here we can write b, and the adjacent side is a. So we can write a here. So now we have all three trig ratios listed out for angle B. Okay. How about for angle A? It's going to change a little bit. Remember, the only thing that's going to stay the same is your hypotenuse. Okay. Your hypotenuse is the only thing that's going to stay the same. Things are going to change, though, in terms of adjacent and, um, uh, and opposite. So if we look at it in terms of angle A, the opposite leg has to be A. The adjacent leg, remember, what leg is beside angle A? Well, it cannot be C because it's hypotenuse, so it has to be B. So this is your adjacent of A. So if we list here sine angle A, Okay, and remember, sine angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. What's the opposite leg of A? Well, the opposite leg of angle A is little a. So that will be A. And what is the hypotenuse? Remember the hypotenuse. That's why we find it, because it never changes, is C. Okay? How about cos angle A? Remember... <laughs> Cos angle is ka, okay? So cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. What's the adjacent side to A, angle A? The adjacent side to angle A is B, okay? Because C, the hypotenuse, can never be adjacent. So it has to be B. So B over the hypotenuse, okay? So cos angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. What's your hypotenuse? Your hypotenuse is C. So C. And then in terms of tan, tan angle A equals, well, remember, tan is toa, okay? Opposite over adjacent. Well, we know our opposite is A, right? From angle A, it is A. And then the adjacent is B. So it'll be opposite, which is A, over adjacent, which is B. And there are your trig ratios, and you can see that things are a little different when you compare sine angle B, whoops, when you compare sine angle B to sine angle A, okay, because your hypotenuse is going to stay the same, but depending on what perspective you're talking about, your adjacent and your opposites will change, okay? So... Just recognize it takes practice to know which ratio to use. Always write this down, so, ka, toa. Write it on your forehead, okay, and remember that saying. And remember how to create the equations from this, okay? You always want to label your triangle, okay? Label, label, label. Label your triangle, la label your sides. Think about being the angle. So as soon as you sprite sine angle... Notate what angle you're talking about. Are you talking about angle B? Are you talking about angle A? Depending on how you label it, are you talking about angle D? So on and so forth. That's why it's important to label. Because if you just write sine angle, what angle are you talking about? Okay, if we don't know what angle you're talking about, then you start running into problems and it becomes harder to solve for solutions. Okay, 
Remember, your hypotenuse can only be hypotenuse. They cannot be adjacent or opposite. And ask yourself always, what is it I'm trying to find? And what equation relates what I have to what I'm trying to find? Okay. Now on this next page, uh, this is just a real little review. These actually shouldn't say tan and cos. Um, so remember how to find, um, let's just separate this. This will be cos angle sine angle, okay? And then this side will be co inverse cos, which will be um, adjacent over hypotenuse, and then inverse sine, which is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, okay? It's really important to understand you use inverse, okay? You're gonna use the inverse when you're trying to find um, the angle, okay? So use inverse sine, cos, or tan to find an angle. And you put the ratio in there, okay? You do not use if you plug in the angle in just cos, you're just going to get the cos ratio, okay? And if we open up our calculator, it's all the same. Remember how we'd have to press second tan to get inverse tan? It's the same thing. Look at cos here in this, in this row. Cos right above it has inverse cos. So if we have inverse cos and then we have, say, our adjacent is 8, over, uh, let's say our hypotenuse is 14, we'll get a degree of 55 degrees, okay? So you only use inverse cos tan or, um, <clears throat> cos tan or sine when you're trying to find angles. Something to note, that's just a really useful note, okay? Something to note is your hypotenuse is always the longest longest length okay your hypotenuse is always the longest length okay so that's just something really useful to note these are kind of instructions it's the same thing but instead of pressing second tan maybe you want second sign you press sign okay so Let's do some examples here, and then uh, we can move on forward. So for example one, determine all three trig ratios for the triangle below. So here we have a given angle, so this is angle T, and it wants us to find all three trig ratios for angle T, okay? So let's first do tan, because that's kind of what we're used to. So remember, so ka, Toa, okay? I'm gonna first focus on tan angle. So remember, the tan angle equation is tan equals opposite over adjacent. Tan angle equals opposite over adjacent, okay? But remember, we are going to show that we are doing it in the perspective of angle T, okay? Angle T here, what is the opposite side to angle T? Well, the opposite side to angle T is 33, okay? So that would be 33, okay? Now, what is the adjacent side to? So this is opposite. And the adjacent side, well, remember, this is why it's always good to show what is your hypotenuse. I have a 90 degree here, so that makes this my hypotenuse because it's on the opposite side. Okay, so that makes this to be my adjacent. Remember, hypotenuse cannot be adjacent. So this would be 56. And there's your ratio, okay? You could leave it as a fraction, or you could plug it into your calculator, 33 divided by 56, and put it as a decimal, but it's always good to just put it as a fraction. So there is my tan ratio for angle T, okay? Now let's focus on cos. 
okay? Cos angle equals, well, remember, cos angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So at this point, we are doing it in the perspective of angle T. So what's my adjacent side to angle T? Well, we already found that it's 56. What's my hypotenuse? Well, remember, the hypotenuse doesn't change. It's going to be 65. So there is my cos ratio for angle T. Okay. Now, on to sine. To do sine, we need to know the equation for sine. Okay. So maybe let's do it below here. So for sine, what's the equation? Sine angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, we are doing it in the perspective of T. So opposite to it is 33 degrees, or sorry, 33, not degrees, that's a length, okay? So the opposite length to angle T is 33, and then the hypotenuse is 65. So this will be opposite, which is 33, over 65. Okay. Now, it asks us to determine the measurement of angle T. So now we're trying to figure out what angle T is. Recognize we can use every single equation or ratio to solve for that. So say we want to use our tan. Remember, in order to solve for the actual angle, we need to use inverse tan. So angle T will equal the inverse of its ratio. Okay, and how do we plug that in? We'll take out our calculator. And again, we need to use the inverse. Make sure you're in degree mode, okay? We need to press second, or the yellow button, to get to the yellow lettering, tan, 33 divided by 56. Okay, and that's going to give me, I'm going to round to one decimal place, 30.5 degrees. Okay, so that's one way to solve. Let's use our cos ratio. Okay, remember, cos angle T equals 56 over 65. So that means we could solve for angle T doing the inverse of cos and its ratio. So let's plug that in. So... This time you're going to press second, and now you're going to press cos to get cos inverse. 56 divided by 65 gives me the exact same number, which it should if you did it right, 30.5 degrees. Okay, and then hopefully you can see what we're going to do with sine now. We're going to do the same thing. We know sine angle T equals 33 over 65. Remember, this is the sine ratio. In order to actually solve for that angle, we must plug in the inverse of sine. So angle T is going to equal the inverse of its ratio. So angle T here, remember, second sine, we need the inverse to actually solve for the angle, 33 divided by 56. And... Sine. Oh, sorry, I plugged in the wrong numbers there. It should be 65. Not, I messed up this part. So it should be second sine 33, right? 33 divided by 65. Okay, so that was just my brain doing a little bit of mumbo jumbo. So we get the same answer, 30.5 degrees. So that's the really cool part about using trig ratios. You don't need to do this every single time, but if you know how to solve it properly, you could use any of the ratios depending on what you're given, okay? So make sure you rewatch that if you need to clarify anything or come in and ask questions. It's really important to understand how to solve this in this unit. Okay, so determine the value of both angles three different ways, okay? So let's look at angle A. 
Okay, if we focus on angle A, we want to find this angle, okay? How could we find that angle? Well, we're given every single length. First off, what is your hypotenuse? My hypotenuse is across from the 90 degree angle, so it'd have to be five. So this is my hypotenuse. In terms of angle A, okay, what do we know? Well, we know that three is opposite of angle A, and that four has to be the adjacent, okay? So if we wanted to solve for this, we could use any of our trig ratios. Okay, so if we write so ka toa, okay, we could decide to use sine in this case because we have the opposite length and the hypotenuse. So sine angle equals opposite over hypotenuse, okay? In terms of angle A, opposite of angle A is three. Hypotenuse is always the same five. So if we wanted to solve for angle A, it's gonna be inverse sine three over five. Okay, remember, anytime you're solving for an angle, you must use the inverse, okay? So if we look here, we can now solve for your inverse sine, okay? So try and practice quickly plugging that in to your formula to make sure you know how to do it. So it'll be second sine, three over five, okay? And that's gonna give me, I'm gonna round it to two, two uh, decimal places. So 36.8, and I'm gonna round that six to a seven because nine rounds it up. Okay, so there's angle A, there's one way to solve it. I'll show you one other way to solve for angle A. Maybe you decide, oh, I have the adjacent side, that is four, and I also have the hypotenuse of five, right? Angle A, I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so I'm gonna use cos. So here, cos angle equals, well, let's see here, coa, so ka, adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse, in this case, in terms of angle A, the adjacent is four, and the hypotenuse is five. So to solve for angle A, we need to take the inverse of that. So second cos four over five. And that's gonna give me the same solution, 36.87 degrees for angle A. Okay, practice trying to use tan. Try and solve it using tan. See if you can do it. I'm only going to do it one way to solve for B. B, I'll use tan. But recognize, I'll write it all in blue here. In the perspective of B, 4 is now your opposite. 3 is your adjacent. Okay, why isn't 5 adjacent? Because it's the hypotenuse. So let's use tan here. Tan angle, remember, is toa, so it's opposite over adjacent. The perspective of tan B, what's our opposite? Well, it's four, so our opposite is four, so we're gonna put it on top, dividing three, which is our adjacent. So angle B is gonna be the inverse of four over three. Second tan in your calculator, four over three, because we are solving for the value and you will get 53.13 degrees. Okay, please try and solve this using cos and sine. You should get the exact same solution. Okay, so let's move on here. Now we are on to just one more word problem. So a six foot ladder is leaning against a house. 
The top of the ladder is five feet above the ground. Determine the angle of inclination of the ladder and ground. Remember, don't try and solve it just reading the, the, um, the given question and plugging values into equations. Break it up. So a six foot ladder is leaning against a house. Try and draw that. A house is hopefully straight up. And then you have a ladder. This ladder is six feet. Okay. And then you have your ground here. The top of the ladder is five feet above the ground. So we are five feet above the ground. It wants us to determine the angle of inclination. So remember, angle of inclination is made from a horizontal and a line going upwards. So the ground is acting as your horizontal and the angle goes up there. Okay, so I, I can draw this triangle very nicely. Recognize this has to be a 90 degree angle because it's a wall meeting the floor. Okay, so if we draw this triangle, going to look like that. We'll have six feet here, a 90 degree angle. This is five feet. And this is our angle of inclination. Remember, label, label, label. So I'm going to write this as T for top of the house. I'm going to write this as um, the ground and then this as L for the ladder. So I have a right triangle that is TGL, where this is my 90 degree angle. Okay. The question mark here is we want angle L. Look at how much easier this is to understand. This is so much easier to understand than having to read example three a million bajillion times to understand what's going on. Now, in this perspective of angle L, what are we given? Well, we have a hypotenuse right? It's across from the 90 degree. And what is five feet to L? Well, five feet is the opposite side to L. If we know that it's the opposite side to L, we can then solve for our angle. Okay. Which ratio sine, cos, or tan, which one relates opposite and hypotenuse, opposite and hypotenuse. So it looks like we're going to have to use sine. So sine angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. This relates what we need, which is the angle to the things we know. So here, let's plug it in sine angle L. What's the opposite length to angle L? Well, it's T to G. So TG over, what's the hypotenuse? It is T to L, TL. Now we can plug those values in. TG is five feet. TL is six feet. And now, Remember, we're trying to solve for an angle. Anytime you want to solve for an angle, you take the inverse of the ratio. So sine inverse 5 over 6. Angle L is going to equal 2nd so sine to get the inverse 5 over 6. That's going to give us a 56. And did it tell us what to round to? It did not. So we're going to round to the nearest decimal. So 56.4 degrees. Okay. And that is our angle of inclination from the ground. Okay, so this is 56.4 degrees, okay? So word problems can be simplified into diagrams, 
The diagrams can be simplified even further to just simple equations that you know how to roll with, okay? So please, please, please practice. Check your understanding with uh, your AFL 2.4. And if things are just really not making sense, still take out all your notes. Remember, this is 10% of your grade. And then show me that you've done it and we can go through as many questions as you want together. Other than that, guys, uh, have an awesome day.